Welcome to our Thanksgiving Eve worship resource. Welcome to Augustana Lutheran Church in Boone, Iowa. Certainly want to wish a blessed Thanksgiving to you and yours. A reminder that not only do we provide weekly online worship, but we have three in-person worship services each week, Thursday evening at 7 o'clock, as well as Sunday mornings at 8.30 and 10.30. In our prayers today, we include Mary Martins and Lynn Tilly. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We now turn to the words of Holy Scripture. A reading from the prophet Joel. The prophet writes, Do not fear, O soil. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord has done great things. 
Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I, the Lord, am your God and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Timothy, the second chapter. St. Paul writes, First of all then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet, and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of our God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all, This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and in truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine... Where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then Jesus said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A four-year-old boy was asked to give the Thanksgiving prayer at the family Thanksgiving dinner. And he was excited and he was earnest about it. So he asked everybody to bow their head in silence. And everybody did so, filled with expectation. And he began to pray. He began by thanking God for each of his friends naming them by name, 
one by one. And then he thanked God for his mommy and his daddy and his brother and his sister and his grandmas and his grandpas and all of his aunts and uncles. And then he began to give thanks to God for the food. And he gave God thanks for the turkey and the stuffing and the mashed potatoes and the rolls and the cranberry relish and the pies. He even gave thanks for the Cool Whip. And then there was a long, long, long pause. And he opened one eye and looked at his mom and said, if I thank God for the broccoli, won't he know that I'm lying? We find ourselves celebrating Thanksgiving. And certainly a part of that is to pause, to take time to pay attention to saying thanks. Saying thanks to God, saying thanks uh, to God for all the blessings, and thanks to all those who are around us. Some of you may remember the name Jimmy Dean. Maybe you've had his sausage recently, but he is a singer and a songwriter. And many years ago, he co-wrote a song that sort of captured the feeling of gratitude. A part of the verse went like this. Now, the name of the song was Drinking From My Saucer. It went like this. So, Lord, help me not to gripe about the tough rows that I've hoed. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflowed. I think Jimmy Dean gives us a good direction to begin our Thanksgiving worship. That our cups overflow and it is important for us to say thanks. Now our gospel is that familiar story of the ten lepers that Jesus is traveling on the road from Samaria to Galilee and there are ten lepers at a distance and they call upon Jesus, Lord Jesus have mercy on me. And Jesus has mercy on them and he heals all ten of them. And then as you may remember, just one came back to Jesus, the others went off to the temple to be declared clean. And Jesus asks, weren't there ten that I healed and there's just one? this foreigner who has come back to me to say thanks. And it's important to note that Jesus commends him for pausing and saying thanks. And so we pause and say thanks. This Thanksgiving holiday gathered maybe with friends, by ourselves, with neighbors, as we pause and say thanks. It was a night many years ago. Ed Spencer was a student at a seminary in Evanston, Illinois, very close to the shores of Lake, Shore, of Lake Michigan. He was sleeping when he heard shouts that came from the lake, from the shore, that there had been an accident, that an excursion boat had run into a freighter not very far off the coast there by the seminary and the excursion boat loaded with hundreds of people was sinking. Now Ed Spencer was a strong swimmer and he didn't hesitate. He jumped into the frigid waters of Lake Michigan and began to swim out to rescue those who were drowning. For six hours he swam out and then swam back, bringing people back to safety. At the end of those six hours, he had saved 15 people, exhausted, cramping, suffering from hypothermia. He collapsed on the shore, only to be told that it looked like there were more people out in the water still. And Spencer had jumped back in and found a man and a woman 
clinging desperately to a piece of wreckage. And he uh, helped those two to safety as well. Fewer than a hundred people of the more than 400 who were on this excursion boat survived the accident. And of that crew, Ed Spencer personally saved 17. He never recovered his health from that. He was never able to return to be a student at the seminary. His health, in a sense, was ruined by his efforts to save these people. Many years later, a journalist for one of the Chicago newspapers was writing a story about disasters on the Great Lakes and had tracked down Ed to ask him about his memories of his involvement in that one tragedy, that shipwreck, that accident. The journalist found Ed in a nursing home in California and journeyed out to interview Ed and asked Ed, what do you remember about that day when you saved all of those lives? And Ed Spencer said bitterly, the only thing I remember is not a single one of those 17 ever thanked me. We need to say thanks. It is important. It is crucial that we say thanks. You may remember the show On the Road with Charles Kuralt. One particular episode, Kuralt and his crew were in Moscow, Russia. And while there, Kuralt was approached by an older gentleman, a Russian gentleman, whose lapels of his jackets were covered with war medals. He told Charles Kuralt that he had served as a medical doctor in World War II with the Russian army. He went on to say then that he had been captured by the Germans and was held as a prisoner of war. Now you may know, but the Germans were particularly cruel to the Russian POWs. In this prison of war, prisoner of war camp, the Americans had lots better treatment and much more food than the Russians. Russians were often starved to death in these camps. Hundreds and thousands of them died. This doctor said that there was a group of American prisoners in that camp who, at the risk of their lives, had smuggled food to the Russian prisoners so that they might not starve. To the best of his knowledge, he wrote down and shared with Charles Kuralt the names of those American soldiers. And he asked if Kuralt might be able to track those American soldiers down. It was an incredibly difficult task, but Kuralt tracked down those American soldiers, at least those who were surviving at that time. And he arranged for a reunion of a sorts. This old Russian doctor was flown to Phoenix, Arizona, and there at the airport in Phoenix, the Russian doctor was reunited with those American prisoners who had risked their lives to save the lives of Russians who were starving. After more than 40 years, with tears in his eyes, this Russian doctor looked at these American GIs and simply said, thank you. Something that he had felt the need to do for all of those years.
the invitation is for each of us to pause this Thanksgiving holiday, to pause and say thanks to God. Amen. enter into our prayers of intercession. Each petition closes with the words, God in your mercy, and you are invited to respond with the words, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God who's giving knows no ending. You invite the whole world to your table of mercy. Hear us as we pray for the church the world, and everyone in need. God, you give all people a place at the table. Nurture and encourage campus ministries, new congregations, and workplace chaplaincies. Support all per parts of the church that meet people where they are and offer accompaniment through daily challenges and joys. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give nourishment to the birds of the air and the lilies of the fields. Sustain all creatures who rely on the earth for sustenance. Water parched ground, dry flooded fields, temper heat waves and frosts, and give sunlight and shade. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you give wisdom to your people. Enlighten all leaders. Inspire and guide our president, President Biden, Governor Reynolds, and all our local leaders, and all who represent us in our government. Give them patience and perspective to choose wisely for our common good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you give nourishment to those who hunger. Bring poverty and food insecurity to an end. Give dignity 
and adequate employment to those who are unemployed and underemployed. Sustain us all at your welcoming banquet of love and justice. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you give community to those who are lonely. Be with our biological families, our chosen families, and our church family as we gather for the Thanksgiving holiday. Send your compassionate presence to those who are lonely, those who are separated or estranged from their families, and those whose loved ones have died. Today we pray especially for Mary and Lynn. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you give a feast of endless thanksgiving. We are grateful for the saints gathered at your table who have gone before us. Unite us with them whenever we give thanks to you. God, in our mercy, hear our prayer. God, your welcome is wider than we can imagine. Receive our prayers for the sake of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless and keep you in grace and peace, from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Let on by the saints before us, go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.